Today on Flick Knows, we're going to go through the land title stats, the quick stats, and then uh, recap a quick conversation we had with BOK Financial. Stay tuned. Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for uh, checking in. Another episode of Flick Knows here. And uh, yeah, we're going to just uh, run through the quick stats here real quick for you. Quick stats real quick. Um, so new listings in the last seven days, we had 37 new listings pending. Uh, we had 36 uh, properties go pending in the last seven days. So as many went pending as came on and then sold properties 21 and price reduced 57. So that's a uh, number of price reduced. I think the market is kind of, or sellers are really starting to see uh, where the market actually is and come to market on uh, on that level of where the market actually is. Um, active listings, this is one that people are really excited about seeing. You know, uh, active listings last June, we had 924, or excuse me, this June, June 22, we had 924 active listings at the end of June, uh, so just a month ago. Um, July of 21, we ended with 841, so we definitely are above where we were at the end of July last year. And then today we're at 991 uh, active listings of which 451 are choices um, that you can choose from. So there are a lot of properties that are on the market or calculated into that active listing because they haven't closed yet, but they are uh, under contract. So a lot of that's the new construction, the fourth street crossing, you know, there's, um, you know, probably 50, 60 units in 4th Street Crossing. We've got the Kindred out in Keystone um, that's under contract, uh, River West, uh, uh, Summit Blue. Uh, so there's a lot of new properties that are under contract, um, you know, that are, that are making that active list considerably higher. But uh, nonetheless, I mean, we still are really seeing the market kind of reacting like how we were in like 2018, 2019 right now from a, not from a price perspective, but so from a, uh, going under contract, how long days on market. Um, we're seeing that in um, the pace of the market and also uh, we still inventory wise are below where we were in 2018 and 19. So, you know, take that into consideration. Um, yeah, I think that there's a lot of fear out there right now about a recession and what that's going to do. Um, I think the housing market uh, in general is considerably resilient. Um, and, you know, historically, it's very resilient through all recessions um, and inflationary times. You know, uh, uh, real estate is one of the best ways to generate wealth, honestly. And so I think that will continue to be the case. Um, and when you try and time the market, you usually miss it. <laughs> Quite frankly, as soon as you see the signs that it's, uh, you know, at its peak and it's going to take a little break, um, you know, or if it's down to the bottom, whatever, you know, but historically, you know, we're going to be seeing uh, housing prices continue up and to the right for the foreseeable future. Um, so let's take a look at the land title stats as well. I don't think, um, you know, let's see. So June of 22, so last month, 161 transactions total. Average residential price, including across the entire market here in Summit County, $1,371,000 uh, was the average price, and the average price per square foot residentially was $822. Um, year to date, uh, we're right on par there. Million three fifty was the average residential price, and the average residential price per square foot eight hundred sixteen. So a little bit lower than what you've seen cumulatively for twenty twenty two. And then uh, single family homes are up twenty nine percent, multifamily up twenty two, and vacant land is up twenty five percent. That's based on the closings last month. And then. Um, Let's just jump into, let's see here, monetary volume. June 22 was down 37%, um, just a lower number of closings, right? Transactions were down 44% in June of 21. Now inventory is up, 
<laughs> transaction volume is down. I think a lot of people are just, that's a reaction to um, interest rates going up and the market getting comfortable with that. Um, and then we've got, it, it, we're pacing 12% down year to date tw over 2021. Let's keep in our minds how frenetic 2020 and 2021 were uh, when we're comparing these. So transactions are down 35%. I mean, things, the numbers we were throwing out last year at the same time, numbers were up 25, 35%, and now we're down. So like, just keep in mind, we're going back to that 2018, 2019, which was a normal market in real estate. Um, average price by history year to date, uh, 2022. Um, so single families were averaging 2.2 million. Multi families were ad averaging 920,000. And then vacant land were averaging 632,000. Um, so that takes us through the quick stats and the land title, um, you know, transactions data that they compile as well for us. And then let's just, we had in our office meeting earlier this week, we had one of the lenders, great lender, Darlena Marmons um, from BOK, BOK Financial uh, come in and speak to us. And we had a couple of questions about just kind of what they're seeing in the mortgage side of things, you know, because we see a lot uh, real estate side of things, but they see, you know, a different set of numbers. They're usually correlated, but it's just interesting to, to see what they see. Um, she was saying that applications have increased uh, recently uh, in the last week or so as people have become more comfortable with uh, the interest rates and new products have come out. They happen to have a 15 year arm. Believe it or not, 15 year arm. You know, where I'm used to seeing three, seven, maybe 10 year arms, 15 year arms that's in uh, the fives, you know, low fives to mid fives. Where are you gonna be in 15 years? I have no idea where I'm going to be, but take that into consideration. That seems like it could be a great product that you could even refinance out of um, if you needed to in the next year or two, because she mentioned that a lot of the experts, once the market stabilizes and you know we get things back under control with uh, employment and inflation and all the everything, that interest rates will likely go back down. Now, we're probably not gonna be seeing threes, two and a half threes again, uh, anytime in the near future, but we will see them uh, stabilize and go back into you know a more historically, um, accurate interest rates and so I think you know this this kind of had to happen right um, you know the market's stabilizing a little bit more um, it's less of a seller's market than it has been in the last two years and uh, right now in particular it is very much a buyer's market I think there are a lot of sellers out there um, with some fear um, which I hate to you know, have a seller selling in fear. But however that is the case, you know, I think that there is some fear for sellers in the marketplace. Um, so that could be a good opportunity for for buyers. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what we're seeing out there right now. If you have any questions, please reach out. I know this was a long one. If you stuck through the entire thing, thanks so much for sticking with us and watching uh, Team Flick at summitliving.com. We're here for you with any questions. And we'll catch you next week for another episode of Flick Nose.